Hey, Rory. Andy, how are you doing today? Good, man. You? Really, really good. Such a pleasure to talk to you again. You too. So, this movie is a lot of fun. It is the the entertainment factor. Like, it's up here for me. And when you get into movies like this, where there is a serial killer, let's say, uh, and he's up against a, a terrific detective, like, it does immediately call to mind and create, like, comparisons because it's a genre I'm a huge fan of, Silence of the Lambs and Seven. Were there particular touchstones, I guess, when you were creating this character, when it was on the page, and then when you were acting it out? Were there any particular touchstones for you for when it came to creating? What, from iconic films such as Silence of the Lambs and, and, and Seven and so on? I mean, I, I know that, I know that. Ja- I mean, Jamie, who I'm sure you'll talk to or ha- have talked to, you know, Jamie Payne, brilliant director. Um, I think those were touchstone films for him. In, and that was the sort of film that we wanted to make for sure. And so so the Buffalo Bill character is probably an obvious example. But actually, what was fascinating to me about the character of David Roby was that he is almost, he doesn't exist in a way. He's sort of us. And, and, and what I mean by that is it's a reflection of the society that we've created using technology. And he is, he himself, because he's such an isolated, lonely character, he, he doesn't, almost doesn't know who he is. He's a construct of everybody who he's observed and surveilled and watched. And and even the way he puts himself together, there's even in the way I cost, you know, we, we costume designed him and I just wanted him to feel like he was put together, like it was a series of ideas that did were slightly mismatched, you know. And really what fascinated me about about this character was was the idea that that he is in his own moral universe, wants to take down what he would say was a hypocrite, uh, you know, someone who is a good person who thinks that he's above what what we all are, which is if we're all honest with ourselves, we all have as dark thoughts as as, as David Roby, you know. And so he's, in a way, putting, you know, using the dark web, using surveillance, using uh, technology, which he's very, you know, smart with, um, he's able to create a, a sort of a safe space for like-minded incel type people who are you know uh, but 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 at the same time he wants to to make them feel that this is a, a, a you know a theatrical kind of home for them in a way and so and and it, and for me it was about about you know this this debate this debate about how desensitized that we we have all and isolated we've all become by valuing and giving such kind of import to 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 the world of of technology i suppose and like the, another parallel that i that i picked up on and i guess part of it is the reason is because you're in the movie as well is because is the riddler in the batman because his crimes are so performative and he uses so much technology and he creates a massive fan base around himself to do this. And I was like, that's such an interesting parallel that like, that's where writers are creating like the criminal mind now is that it's not just one person anymore. It is because of the internet. You are able to create this yeah. like one man army out yeah. there. And I thought that was, that was such an interesting idea. And it's funny that you mentioned how he looked and how that was created, because I kept thinking my eyes were playing tricks on me because I thought your pupils were just pure black. And I was like, that's such a great visual shorthand to let us know there's something off immediately that we're not to like this guy. I mean, that was the thing I, I wanted. I wanted there to be some sort of because um, it's a lot about watching. So the le- lenses f- f- were were very much his his thing. You know, his fetish in a way. The idea of seeing through different kind of lens because they're all different. Literally, in, in every scene, there's a, there's a different set of lenses. You know, so. So that 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 was that was that was part of exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I have to mention the hair. I was like, it it was giving me like George Michael '80s tremendous hair. It was just, but again, it was just it's so attention grabbing in in a brilliant way when you're watching the movie. But in as you said, it just feels like the wrong decision was yeah. made by him to look yeah. a certain way. Yeah. I like how, how did you land on that yeah. particular? Me, it, was de- it was the wrong decision by me <laughs> because I had to dye my hair, and then everybody thought it was a wig. That was a really bad decision. Everybody thought it was a it was a syrup, and I, and and actually, I'd gone through a lot of trouble to get that quaffed and and blow dried and and dyed. Let me add, uh, and Cynthia Revo on the third day came up to me and said, "Wow, the makeup team have got a great wig. It, it's really real." And it's like, "This is my hair. This is mine." You know, so and I, I appreciate that at least you've picked up on that, and that it, it is a you know it's put together. Someone said it was like Siegfried and Roy, actually. Oh yeah, is... I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> I could kind of see that. 
And there's scenes in this obviously where it's yourself and Idris, and I, I've I've met Idris, and Idris is he's a he's a big bloke. He's he's, he's a, a he's a large building of a man. So like when you know, right, I've got a scene coming up, and I've got I've got to appear intimidating to someone who, by his very nature, just by his stature, can be intimidating to some people. Like, how do you play off that dynamic? Well, I mean, the part of the decision with the fight, I mean, we had a great stunt team, by the way, really, really amazing stunt team who operated in a, in a slightly different way to the way I, I've normally worked, where instead of handing down a bunch of moves, it was very much kind of, they allowed that we did a lot of stunt training in terms of character. So, you know, David Roby, I wanted to be not... Um, someone who would expend too much energy, but had a lot of have a lot of force. Had martial arts training. It was like having a bullfight in a way that, that he could duck and dive and and use and use his weapon efficiently. And that was the thing. Do you know what I mean? Rather than yep. this brute force that 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 Luther has, it, it's sort of trying to dance around that in some way and, and counteract it by using his own strength against him and ducking and diving. You know, and that was that was really interesting and and not and not not exerting too much energies. So sometimes when you in screen fights, it's it, it you know you, you see a lot of energy being exerted. Whereas this, I wanted Lu Roby to be using minimal amounts of uh, you know effort. So yeah, one final question, if that's okay. Um, since we're calling from Ireland, <clears throat> it was it's pretty much a year ago to the day since the Batman came out, and since then Barry Keoghan has blown up. He's got his Oscar nomination. He's he's done tremendously well. And a year ago, people who knew him, it was like mm, maybe. Maybe some people knew, some people didn't. Now everyone knows him. Are you excited to potentially get back in the ring with him in the future, considering how much further along he's done in the, in the time since the first movie? Absolutely. I mean, I, I've I've known Barry for some time, and I, I absolutely adore him, and I think he's a hugely talented actor. And again, his his the honesty in his performances is, is so kind of. You know, it's overwhelming. So I, I think I, I'm so thrilled for it. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't wait to see what's uh, what, what happens next. Yeah, we know what we're talking about. <laughs> we, we both know what we're talking about, and I appreciate uh, speaking around, dancing around it. I appreciate dancing around that one. <laughs> Andy, thank you so much for your time today. Cool, cool. Lovely to see you again. <laughs>